a little late, but that's all right. I was doing some other stuff and also editing podcasts. Getting back to the Rising Stones after doing some other stuff. Hey, I was... Got my resistance weapons. Once I finish this section content, the uh, 5.1 content, should be able to uh, upgrade these. Make them a little prettier and higher level. Of course, I'm not actually using them. This is just a glamour because... Well, what I got is better. Uh, Eskos, gods, it's good to see you. I hope you be, your being here means you've had your fill of rest. More than my fill. I'm going to get back to doing stuff. Well, you certainly end it. Not much has happened since your last visit. I had planned for you to meet that helper that I to told you about, but he refuses to answer his link pearl. I do hope he's all right. I've been exchanging messages with the Eorzean Alliance throughout, though. No, we say the fighting has finally stopped at Gimlet Dark, and the Empire has shown no sign of movement, which means we might actually have a moment to ourselves for a change. Seeing as you are back, maybe we can, you can tell me more about your time in the first. Great. Oh, and if you don't mind, I'd like to, I'd like to ask Slamin to join us. She'll want to know what's happening to Min, what happened to Minfilia, and I think it's best she hears it from you. We'll meet you on the terrace at the House of Splendors. Now, one of the things I really would r wish they would do is when you're in a building, not to allow you to be on a mount. Too much, um... Uh... Rolling down through that. And Flamin. Let's go. Why? It's been too long. Tataru did mention that I'd be joining you. I would be joining you, did you not? Yeah, so uh, here's what happened with Philia. Thank you. Words cannot f well express how I've longed to know more of the first. This world, Menphilia, has sacrificed so much to save. But come, rest your feet. Tataru will be, be arriving shortly. And so Minfilia chose to pass on her gifts to the next oracle. This girl who thank her name Breen. To have such a burden thrust upon her as a child, only to embrace it when given the choice. In that respect, they are quite alike. It would seem her legacy is indeed in capable hands. Essigos, might I ask a favor of you when next you return to the first? To tell Reen that what I cannot. To tell her, thank you. And I would offer thanks to you as well for staying with her to the end. Begging your pardon, but could I have a word? We all. We all. I hope you are here to tell me that you've received word from our helper. I wish, nay, it's not not had a peep out of him. But I've been a good long while, while now. Too bloody long. On account of that, I'm going to sneak over the border and see if I can get a signal to him from closer up. But what if they catch you? There must be another way. Well, it ain't as if we, we can ask Stenkrin to do it. Besides, I shouldn't have no trouble picking my way through Gimlet and now the fighting's died down. Gods know there's enough shadows to hide in. When a beat's waiting around, he... Here, twiddling me thumbs. Any road, I just thought I'd let you know. Now, I best be... Ugh. Nearly forgot. 
prowls at the stones as she wants a word. Something to do with the patients. She's getting ready to examine them again when I left. We best head back then. I'm sure it's important. I love flamen. Flamen. As her friends know her. Basically take the F from her tribe off. So that's the thing about Makote, which have the like letter and then a an apostrophe and then a, a, the rest of the name. Is the letter is the, their tribe name. <laughs> like the M tribe. Minago is Nago. But she's part of the M tribe, so she's Minago. It seems she's still examining them. Oh, I do hope it's nothing bad. Speaking of which, I should probably unlock Eden. You're here. Good. Ooh. It's over. Oh. So, how are they? Still locked in slumber, but otherwise in good physical health. For the present, at least. For the present? Oh no, is something wrong with them? I'm afraid there may be. I summoned you after detecting faint signs of instability in Thancred's corporeal ether, but subsequent examination suggested all five might be affected. And when I examined them just now, my fears were confirmed. Tellingly, the degree of instability varies between them. Thancred exhibits the most notable signs followed by Yushtola and Urianger. The twins' ether, meanwhile, remains relatively stable, but there is a change there too if one knows to look for it. Hold on. Isn't that the order they were called away in? Indeed. Which leads me to believe the instability will only increase with time. Though I can but speculate, I fear this may be a symptom of a weakening link between body and soul. By the gods! What happens if the link is broken? I cannot say for certain. This is all unknown territory to us. Yet whatever happens, it cannot be good. Mercifully, the instability is still only slight. And you may rest assured, Master Matoya and I will do everything in our power to keep it from worsening. Be that as it may, it is imperative that you find a way to restore our friends' souls to their bodies. Rest for the righteous, eh? I realize you've only just returned from saving two worlds. But time is not on our side. But where's he even supposed to start? We had the greatest minds in the realm hunting high and low for an answer, and they ran out of places to look. You stated in your report that the Exarch had originally intended to reverse the summoning process by means of his own death, correct? Raha always was a reckless young fool, ready to die for the first righteous cause that came along. His plan might well have worked, but I for one am glad he never had the opportunity to see it through. 
even if it does mean our friends must remain stranded a while longer. There is another way, I am sure of it. And the key lies with him, with the Exarch. Pray return to the first and apprise him and the others of the situation. We, meanwhile, will do what we can from here. And, if the fates are kind, we will have good news to share upon your return. See, I told you, you don't have to summon me back. I can travel by an Aetherite between. It's not a problem. Oop. Wrong way. Actually, I didn't even need a run. Okay, much closer just by internet. Ah, that reminds me, I also need to unlock a couple of dungeons. I think one of them I do during this, but then there's another that's a side one. Ah, let's go see if returned. I hope your time in the source was simply restful. But of course it wasn't. Go on. Uh, weakening Link. <laughs> Corporeal ether shows a line of instability by the gods. Possibility never even occurred to me. If you have returned in the hope that we research is yield a solution, I feel that so sorely disappointed. It's but a mercy we have the likes of Mistress Kryl and Master Matoya to keep our friend's body safe while we wrestle with the problem. But they cannot forestall the separation of body and soul indefinitely. Come, the others must be told. Pray excuse my late arrival. Will Thancred and Reen not be joining us? Nay, my lady. With apologies to all, they beg leave to pursue their investigation of the Empty to its conclusion. Should matters here demand their presence, however, they did assure me that they would make themselves available. Yes, of course. Then let us proceed. I, I think it best that you begin by providing a summary of Mistress Kryle's findings. The this is really Elagos doing all this, but I'm using Esagos because Esagos in my uh, I suppose it was only really to be expected that some change would occur. That's part of his free company. Yet our souls seem unaffected, to my eye at least. Uh, also, uh, Eskos with like all this techno babble uh, or etherology things. E How long they will remain so is another question. Kryl is right. It is imperative we find a way to return to the source. Perhaps an explanation of the method by which I brought you here will yield some inspiration. Ere I begin, it must be noted that I am by no means a gifted mage. In order to employ powerful magics, I must rely upon the Crystal Tower and its boundless reservoirs of energy. 
The magic that summoned you was no exception. It is a singular spell, adapted through painstaking effort from the technique that transported me to the first. To use an analogy, it works by cutting a hole in the fabric of reality. A hole tailored to the object of summoning, through which it and it alone may pass unscathed. Though I succeeded in creating said hole, I failed to latch onto my intended target. Instead of you, the spell found those close to you, and ended up summoning them in their incomplete state. I would not soon throw my life away, not after the lengths you and yours went to save it. And so long as I breathe, I will spare no effort to see you safely home. But should all else fail, and your lives be at stake, there remains one sure method. Don't you even think about it. Oh. <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> what about Lisa? How can you even entertain such thoughts? You owe your life to the Warrior of Light, and you don't get to die unless he says so. I love the ears shoulder, too. Your followers await your divine judgment. <laughs> I love you, Shola. What did you just... <laughs> if the two of you have finished, perhaps we could return to our discussion? Rather than dwelling upon the multiple failed attempts at transference, I think it would behoove us to focus on the solitary success. What, me? I would draw your attention to the fact that our friend can travel between worlds possessed not only of his body and soul, but his personal effects besides. This is no different from the teleportation magics to which we are all accustomed. Magics that allow for the transportation of those inanimate objects one considers to be an extension of oneself. Are you suggesting that simply by considering us his possessions, he could carry our souls back to the source upon his person? Well, it would be nice if things were that simple for a change, but vague notions of ownership seem a rather tenuous thing to stake our lives on. So much as a moment of doubt on his part, and we'd be left floating in the rift. Milady hath the right of it. The requisite fixity of belief would be too much to ask, even of our friend. Yet, were we to immure our souls within an object in his possession, mayhap then our safe passage could be assured. White Aurasite would, I believe, serve as a suitable vessel for this purpose. It was conceived to imprison the massy soul of an Asian, and should house one of ours with relative ease. We would need only to ensure our soul's safe preservation inside the stone, and identify a means by which they might be transferred back unto our vacant bodies. Soul preservation and transference. I believe I know of someone who may be able to assist us. On the far shore of the Source, there stands a great palace built by the Elves. It was forsaken in the wake of the Flood, but a certain new Mo chose to make their home there soon after. Though they have long lived as a recluse, they once occupied a place of honor in Verbert's royal court, and it is said that none in all of Norvrant is more knowledgeable than they on matters of the soul. Well, I've no objection to seeking a helping hand, but if they've gone to such lengths to hide themselves away from the world, what makes you think they'd be willing to lend us one? <laughs> a worthy question. Years ago, I myself tried and failed to solicit their cooperation in the battle against the Sin Eaters. No sooner had I begun to make my plea than they unleashed a swarm of their familiars upon me. Unlike me, however, you have curried favor with the Fae Folk. By that merit alone, I am hopeful that they would grant you an audience. They may still be inclined to turn you away, of course, but if their knowledge might feasibly facilitate your return home, we have to try.
Actually, probably just go with it. boost my stats. The Grand Cosmos, that is the palace we seek, stands on the opposite shore of the source. I will arrange for a boat to carry us there. Whilst thou journeyest thither, I think I, it best that I devote mine energies to the creation of white orosite. Uh, by thy leave, of course. The process requireth no small amount of time. Um, and should the new mo content to lend us their aid, we will have need of a suitable vessel ere long. Agreed. And I would ask that the rest of you meet me in Sullen, and do be prepared for a warm reception. Pray join the others in Sullen, and I shall turn my thoughts to your sight and prize Dankred and Reen of your progress. As I said before, you have told you before, I am scarcely set foot on the place, palace grounds when I was set upon by their host's familiars, and I expect our reception today being no different. That is why I propose we march through the main gate, up and strong. I'm sorry, but are we not here to petition for assistance? I can honestly think barging in and looking for a fight is going to persuade them. Actually, I believe the Exarch may have the right of it. They have no doubt poured a great deal of time and energy into their creations. Were I them, I would be most interested to meet with those who would overcome my defenses. As with any true seeker of knowledge, there is little we can say or do to convince them to help us if we know nothing of their character, nor that's why they chose to hide themselves from the world. But if we can seize this moment, perhaps, perhaps we may earn ourselves an audience. Weapon strong it is, then. Oh, I must say, Exarch, you certainly seem to be enjoying all this. Do I? Well, I will not deny that I enjoy the thought of fighting alongside you all rather than pacing about inside the Crystal Tower. You both seem to be in a rather high spirits. If you ask me, not that I'm surprised, it will invariably improve when Esagos is around. And what exactly are you implying? 
He averted a calamity, and the light has seemed de destined to consume him. has been extinguished. It is only natural that we be pleased to see him. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, well, you have plenty of time to celebrate his good health after we've finished here. Oh, well, of course. And let us proceed to the palace. All right, because Ali's a... All right, I only get one choice of feeler, really. I mean, if I go tank, then then I can at least have Alize and Yishtola. Uh But f fanboy and fangirling is Alize and, and Graha. Might as well just let them go. And Alphano, just to get, kind of keep the, the twins together. Should you value your lives, you'll quit this place at once. Now be gone. Ali say, I really need to teach you AOE spells. They make a mess of my floors. Floors swish and flick, my lovely swish and flick. Do these brooms not remind you of Master Matoya? I shall call forth blades. Mm. 
You run them through. All right, I I hate this fight. I am so bad at it. He insists to make it a mess of my palace. This is, make insists to make it a mess of my palace, and he wouldn't leave me no choice. Oh dear, she doesn't seem inclined to talk. Well, it was your idea to brandish blades at the door.
I dodged the brooms, but I still... Never thought. I like how they're nice and bunched up. Or spam. All right, pause while I do some which uh, uh, administrative deep. Here we are. Oh, 
More bell. Oh, this is a. Uh, oh, there's paraporxies and bellporxies. And see, the creatures have sullied the sanctity of your garden. They must be dealt with. There's no end to these creatures. As they think that a few plants will throw us down, those are surely mistaken. And upgrade it.
Immortal Knights, heed my call! So you would not, not be dissuaded from from a misguided path. A pity uh, behind you. No, behind you. Well, these halls long enough. Come, Lucas. Our guests yet to want for company. <coughs>
This guy's kind of fun. All right, see how there's like things like the velvet drapery, a grand piano, a gilded stool, a, a plush sofa. There's fire and flammable objects. I'll let you pull our XR. An alpha no. Ha I got it before you, Alize. <laughs>
Yay! Oh, the fellas make me happy. Although I do have to say, I still have have preferred of a row for playing purposes. Hey, check this out. I better can't do it right now, but. was my fiercest familiar. Oh, impressive. Backlog, it is good to see you again after all these years. And judging by your vigorous greeting, I dare say the feeling is mutual. To be sure, a simple shake of the hand would have sufficed by way of welcome, but I shan't complain. But you must be wondering as to the purpose of our visit. We come to beg your assistance in a most urgent matter. Beg? Our comrades' very souls are in danger. If we are to save them, we will need the benefit of your unsurpassed knowledge on the matter. Please, will you not sit and hear our plea? Oh, how dare you! How dare you speak thus in my presence! It was to escape such words of temptation that I hid myself from the world of men. You are sinners, one and all, and I swore never again to have any part in your affairs. I can only imagine what terrible events forced you into a life of seclusion. But I know that the new Mo are a good and noble folk. It is not in your nature to turn a blind eye to the plight of those around you. And in treating with us, I am certain whatever mistrust you feel for man will begin to... heal. All right. Slight comment, if you're a little confused, then why is there emphasizing shake, beg, sit, heal? So pixies are apparently uh, uh, born from the souls of, of of people who died as children. The fwas uh, are uh, created from souls of those who had drowned. In the case of Numo, they're created by the souls of dead dogs. Pick, beg, sit, heal. Not be satisfied. Oh, I oh, suppose I could listen. After all, there's no harm in just. No, 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 no! I mustn't. Not again. That damn court mage seemed to have the best of intentions too, and countless innocents died for my naivety. Oh, you know not what you ask of me. What horrors my knowledge has wrought. You mean the magical plague of Obert, which we know about from the tank roll quest. 
You know of the plague? Then you know how dangerous Soulcraft can be. Instead of saving your friends, you risk damning them. Are you sure you're willing to take that chance? Oh. Oh. Oh, very well. I will hear your petition, but that is all. And I expect fitting payment for my troubles. Commensurate with your contribution to our cause. No more and no less, I promise you. With that settled, might I impose upon you to join us at the Crystarium? I'm afraid the nature of my friend's predicament calls for absolute secrecy. There you are. The others have head to the Crystal Tower with Becklug. For the record, I truly wish we hadn't had to resort to such such words when treated with them. I would rather have sought to convince, not to compel. Yet, I cannot deny that part of me is glad Orianger shared his knowledge of the Nemo with us. Had he not, Becklug wouldn't be here. Speaking of whom, we should hurry. Keep our guests waiting would only add insult to injury. May I now enter the Grand Cosmos with a party of NPC avatars. To make use of this feature, we open the trust interface located under duty in the main menu. Duty. Fast. Oh, level 71. I need to... But... Oh, no, I can't. I need to level them up in order to do the Grand Cosmos. But I have a thought. On <laughs> that part. Avatar looks just about ready to leave you behind. We mustn't delay here any longer, Eskos. If Beck Lug is, is to hear the truth about prevails in the first, you are you of all people should be present. I'm not sure if I'll actually end up leveling them until Endwalker. When I can basically, because uh, you, once I have Sage and Reaper... Which are the two new jobs. Because they will most likely be starting at 70. Um, once I get them from 70 to 71. Uh, I'll probably use. Those two jobs for. Um, uh, those two jobs to help level them. With that. Reaper is probably getting part of the maiming set. Uh, let me see if I can remember everything correctly. There's bending, striking, maiming, scouting, aiming, caster, casting, healing. There's seven different sets of armor. Uh, of base armor. Um, I already have a healer, essentially, with, with Astrologen. Um, but I'll still level Sage, because Sage... Actually, for Essigos, I probably won't. I probably will not do that. But I'm thinking if I, what I need to do is because I already have four of... I already have four of the seven. I need to essentially have three... jobs to kind of fill in that gap. So I think I'm going to get Ninja, which is the scouting, and uh, Dancer. I'm going to level up just so I have... A job with each different armor set. I just kind of wish that they didn't have like. Oh, I teleport to the consumer. Where have we got everything? Or...
Mending, maiming, striking, scouting, and casting. So I would just need a ninja a dancer. And then I would have and then with thinking about Reaper as kind of like the main filler. That's just three more jobs to get to Katie, but that's okay. During downtime I can fill it in with a dancer. Where, where is my dancer? Dancer's still at 60, so I still need to... Uh, but... I can work that. Need to go to the ocular. It, the kind of the idea is just... Because I'm getting gear for these different types of things, I might as well have a job that can use them. Speaking of which, I got a fending thing. And of course, I got that. There we go. Right now, I have a, a whole bunch of uh, five, ten crafted pieces, except for the waste. Where are you? Exposition. <laughs> Excited to explain the situation. I'm sorry. You mean to tell me not only that the return of night was your doing? But that you hail from another world as well? Everything we told you, of the Source, the Shards, the Seven Umbral Calamities, all of it is true. I realize how fantastical it sounds, and I would not blame you for doubting our testimony. But given your expertise, you must surely have noted the peculiar nature of their souls. Any other time and I would have dismissed your stories as balderdash and flummery. But upon closer inspection, tis plain their souls are far denser than is normal, and that they do not possess true bodies. Save you. Your body is your own, and your soul is the densest of them all. It's because I was rejoined by Zarbert. As I said before, were it not for their heroism, the skies over Norvrant would still be awash with light, the realm yet at the mercy of 4-3 and the Sin Eaters.
After all they have done for our home, seeing them safely back to their own it seems the very least we can do. Hmm. Your tale is intriguing. Yes, very intriguing indeed. Simply to hear it is fitting payment in itself. As for your friends, I can but agree. Their valorous deeds on behalf of Norvrant are deserving of recognition. Of their own fitting payment. You will help us then? I will. I would see my knowledge put to good use for a change. I do have one condition, however. I am not the spry young Numo I once was. As such, I will require assistance in my fieldwork and testing. It would be our pleasure. We'll be laboring for our own benefit after all. You have spun quite a tale, but tell me, have you given any thought to how we might return to your world? Exposition. Additional theories. Torah sites, you say? Intriguing proposition. But one which fails to account for the present state of your souls. They have become highly charged, likely as a consequence of having... Maintain tangible forms for so long. In such an energetic, unstable state, there is no telling what would happen to their souls within the order site. They could very well become immutable to a transference, never to be restored to their bodies. Then would it be possible to trans force our souls into a state of dormancy prior to the transference? In theory, yes. But the soul is not a candle to be snuffed out and relit on a whim. Well, that sounds ominous. What exactly would render our souls dormant entail? In order to maintain a corporeal form, your souls constantly draw ether from your surroundings. This process must be halted, resulting in surfeit of ether removed. Your minds would ultimately be separated from their from their foe bodies of yours, rendering you incapable of interacting with the world around you. Cruel fate under normal circumstances, but one which will be rectified upon your return home. <coughs> Even lifeless husks, like those poor souls on the end of Journey's head. Corrupted by the sin eaters, the ether made stagnant by the light. Corrupted? Stagnant? Why do I see unfortunate individuals? Why? Why do you think you might be able to help them? I might, or might not, but I shan't know for sure since I have se until I've seen their condition firsthand. Then I would be glad to take you with them, on the understanding that you won't do anything that might increase their suffering. It was my faith in a man I lost. Man I lost, not my compassion. It was my faith in man I lost, not my compassion. Well, I see no need for all of us to accompany you. Will you escort our guests to the inn? I will assist Orianger in creating the requisite order site. I believe my tongues would be better applied to that endeavor as well. Might I leave the three of you to assist backlog as necessary? Let us make for our meringue then.
So this is Halric, is it? Yes. His etheric balance leans perilously toward light. Toward stasis. What do you suppose will happen to him? Not too bright, are you, boy? The same as all poor souls corrupted by light, he will become a sentient. You don't know that. We defeated the ward and so banished the light from the night sky. Our work has completely unresponsive before, but now... No room. And perhaps there is yet hope. If I may, there is a treatment I wish to administer to the patients. What sort of treatment? In the course of my studies of the I once created a tonic that could temporarily stimulate the ether in one's body. For some requirement, it came to be used by the Knights of Robert, and for far darker purposes. Lest it fall into the wrong hands, I swore never again to make it. For their sakes, we'll break that oath. It is not like to reverse the stagnation, mind you, but it would offer some measure of relief. Arden stares blankly at you. It would seem the tonic has had no effect. What is this warmth that feel in my chest? Feel warm. My legs. They don't feel as heavy. Now then, have you noted any change in the patients? A notable rise in body temperature and increased motor function, most of the patients at least. The more severely afflicted show no response. As I feared, then. It is true that from the restoration of night, the corrupt, corrupted influence of light will no longer grow, as yes, their bodies will naturally return to equilibrium, given time. But this holds true only for their corrupt, their corrupt corporeal ether. Their incorporeal ether, that of the soul, not so easily mended. Which is why those in the later stages of corruption, like Halric, appear unaffected by the tonic. Nicely. The boy's soul is too far gone, his mind held together by the finest of threads. There is a chance he may one day recover, of course. But it would take years, decades even. Had the gods, he could wake up to find, wake to find himself an old man. Find reward for his persistence, the opportunity to mourn the life he never had a chance to live. No, there must be something we can do. Look, I realize this is not why we petitioned your aid, but do you think possible they'll find a way to hasten the recovery? A B. Nor do I think it impossible that in treating them you might learn something relevant of your own predicament. Yeah, we're going to go with the gold. For guilt. I suspect the Crystal Exarch, Exarch has told you of my past, that I was once a mage, once a mage of the Royal Court of Robert, and their soul craft was my field of study. The tonic you administered to the patients here is one of the fruits of my labors. I hope to do great things for the kingdom. <sighs> in the end, my 
Knowledge brought up only suffering, a plague the like of which none has ever seen. In the hands of unscrupulous men, which should have been my greatest triumph, instead became my greatest shame. Yeah, at least the Warriors of Light Brothers was responsible for that justice. Aye, that they did. I shudder to think what might have happened had they not. Let us return to the task at hand, finding a means of which we might revitalize these people's corporeal ether. You think it can be done? The sky is still ablaze with primordial life, I would call it an exercise in fertility. Now, now we may have a chance. The method I have in mind will entail the conjuring of a familiar. They are able to amplify the energies pouring poured into them, making them the perfect conduit for the aether revitalizing magics we will ultimately employ. You're about to launch into a lengthy ex explanation of the metaphysics of your plan. Don't bother. I'd rather get on with doing whatever it is that needs to be done, if all the same to you. Whatever reagents must be procured or spells invoked, I'll do it. Am I your spirit? Very well. Your first task will be to gather the necessary materials. The purest of waters and finest of clay, as well as a fade lantern brim brimming with pixie magic. If you're convinced the f resulting familiar could help the patients, fine. Of note, the water and clay will be simple enough, but I think you know what we'll have to do to get the lantern. You don't mean... Pixies took quite a liking to us before. If we human them with the company, I'm sure they'll be willing to help us. Fine. We'll pay a visit to Il Meg, though I never thought you would be the one to suggest going back there. I'm impressed you've been there at all, let alone befriend the Fey folk. Oh, while you're at it, seek out the Nemo of Pla Ani. They'll be able to supply you with water suitable for our needs. Right. Get this over with, shall we? It still remains the matter of the clay. Might I prevail you to find it? Clay from Amar Eng would likely be best. Know you of anyone who might be able to assist us? Oh, there's a scavenger of Mordsuk. And you're by. Scavengers, you say? Well, they may know the lay of land, but I dare say they are more interested in the trinkets and bubbles in the earth than the earth itself. I know some. Well, there's a matter of twine. What's that? You know the miners of twine? Perfect. Speak with them, and you shall have no trouble procuring what we need. While you and the twins are occupied, I will see if there is aught else I can learn of this stagnation which inflicts the people here. Esquels. Well, what a coincidence. You've come at a good time. We've just a moment f finished repairing the talus, and trolley, trolley, you'd look, and trolley, you lot took to an abathon ring. The trolley was no trouble, but the talus would have been another matter had we not had a visit from Master Chai. He offered us a share of the leftover building materials from Daedalus Stoneworks, as well as a few trade secrets to help us along. Clever man that China's. He seemed pretty keen on the idea I had of how to put in the giant talus to work. Like a giant trolley! But Magnus still refuses to see all the good we could do with it. You're entitled to your dreams, Jarek, but that doesn't mean you can go harassing our guests with them. Master Chai was just being polite. And something tells me as was here didn't come all this way to talk about trolleys. What is it you need, friend? I'm looking for some clay. I'm trying to make a porksy. See, this familiar that requires clay from Amarang. Well, look no further. If anybody can find 
Find you some quality clay, it's us. Saying that in it isn't exactly a commodity nowadays, but there may, must be some lurking somewhere or another, waiting to be dug up. If I'm not mistaken, there are time, there was a time when they used to take clay from multi-barren mines to make adobe bricks. Place is swarming with coyotes now, but if you are after the good stuff, you could do worse than to look there. All around this big rock. The twins have returned, and in one piece at that, I'm convinced the pixies would turn at least one of them into a garden ornament. But no. You have the clay, I take it? Wonderful. We need but to combine the clay and the water, then heat the mixture with a fey lantern. After that, it will be a simple matter of settling upon a suitable form, performing the the necessary incantation. But, uh, Lug, I have a question. In the event that we, we had need of this spell and you weren't around, would it be possible for another to perform the incantation? Assuming they possess the requisite skill, yes? I reckon the others have suffered so much that I swore to do everything in my power to save them. If there's a chance a spell could do that, I'd be the one to invoke it. Hmm. Mayhap you should be the one to do it. A deep understanding of the subject's physical state, combined with a strong desire to help them, can drastically increase the magic's effect. And you are plainly more familiar with these people than I. I dare say, there are few in all of Northern more dedicated to finding a cure. It's not, is that not so, Wessigas? Uh, very few, and if I should go awry, I'll see what I can do. Uh, no, 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 no. Ezekus does not want to do this. Absolutely, she's the best woman for the job. I'll give it my all for Howick, for Tesleen. Then we are of a mind. You, we are all of the mind on the matter. Alize, shall we be the? Shall be the one to conjure the familiar. Let us begin. 
I trust you've prepared the clay? Very good. Now, I would have you sculpt for me a porksy. Plump, with floppy ears and a short curly tail. A porksy. I think I know what you mean. There we are. H how's that? <laughs> well, it, it is certainly creative. <laughs> There's no denying that. Alpha <laughs> uh, no. Uh, Alpha no. <laughs> Yes, yes, um, I'm no artist. Very funny. Pay him no mind, child. Though it may look like a grotesque parody of reality, it is what the Invoker believes that matters. It's good enough. You're not, not helping. helping. <laughs> I love the seed. But I speak the truth. If successful, this incantation will turn imagination into reality. Which is why the only thing of import is what you believe this figure embodies. You must focus. Hold the Porksy's image steady in your mind's eye. Now then, as I taught you, relax and allow your energies to flow. With flesh of clay, I bid thee rise. On wings of dreams to touch the skies. What once was idle fantasy, I call forth to reality. Hmm, not bad for a first attempt. Now, let us see what can be done for young Halric. Through the operation of the magics you invoked to animate this familiar, it is now replete with the energies required to stir the boy's soul. You need but give it a name, and it will do as your heart desires. A name. All right, I've decided. Now. Go, Angelo!
Mother... I... How is he, Backlog? Did it work? I believe it did. You and your fe fledgling familiar have done well. In my ears, eyes do not deceive, a hint of colour has returned to his soul. God, I wish, would jump for joy if I weren't so exhausted. You're so close, Halric. Now, we even now, in the process of discovering, this magic asks much of the Invoker, which we, you must not have realised, is that the same is also true of the subject. As such, we must proceed with caution. However, with further treatment, I have the utmost confidence the boy will make a full recovery. Observing the reanimation of his stagnant stall has been most enlightening. I will need time to put my theories to the proof, but I believe I can fashion a spell to produce the opposite effect. That is, to induce stagnation. Thus enabling our safe transport back to the source via oil site. A thought occurred to me about this treatment. Backlogs said that when the soul is rendered dormant, the mind is separated from the body. That a person becomes incapable of interacting with the world around them. Does that not sound a lot like some of the tempered back at the source? Not really. It is the fate of most tempered to become slaves to primals, save in a handful of cases. Or am I missing something? If I must master can master this technique, the art of revitalizing the soul, I know of at least one in the source that could desperately use such a treatment. Ah, Gabu! Exactly. His condition is uncannily similar to Harrick's, is it not? The only difference being that his soul is suffused with earth-aspected ether instead of light. It follows that if his soul is subject to a similar kind of stagnation, there can be a chance we can save him, right? Forgive me, but who is this Gabu? Hello, from who you speak. Right, he's a, a, a moored. Uh, I see, his condition does sound familiar. Yet there is much more about the soul that remains unknown even to me. I say this, is, this not to discourage you, you understand, but to remind you that this is delicate work we do here. Work requiring patience. Of course, as long as there is hope for the patients here, I will devote whatever time is needed to see this through. But I refuse to spend that time in idleness. If it is all the same to you, I'd like to stay here with Angela and continue with their treatment. The two of you should return to the Crystallium with Backlog and see if you can't make any headway with their newly posited theories. I would tell you, to, I would tell you to rest first, but I see that you're not to be convinced. Ah, the fire of youth. Let us return to the Crystarium, then. Finally, I found you. Finally, I found you. Excuse me, I have to say the right... Arshia, what are you doing all the way out here? Oh, there's terrible trouble back at Yomo. Lady Chai's beside herself, sighing, pacing a whole lot. And near enough begged me to go and find you. Fine and pacing. Must be urgent. I take it I will be returning to the Crystarium alone. Go on then. It's not as if I have anything for you to do. Thank you, Backlog. Oh, sorry for bothering you and all that, but she says, says the future of your more at stake.
much as what we did at the beginning of of the, this expansion, we take a trip to Amarang and take a trip to <laughs> to Calusia. <laughs> Oh, oh, Lady Shy's up in the parlor. Best not to keep her waiting, eh? Let me take a quick look at something. Really close to leveling. Well, not here seems seems out of the ordinary, though I do not see Lady Chai anywhere. Oh, I'm probably pacing around outside again, staring off into the distance and all that, sighing. Strange. Let's see if we can find her and discover the source of her distress. Lady Chai, what are you doing out here in all in the rain? Oh, thank oh. heavens you're here. Lady Chai, whatever is the matter? I I knew not where else to turn. Oh, this is all too much for my poor heart to bear alone. Alone? What of Master Chai? But that is the very reason I summoned you. He's gone. What? What happened? It all began after the events at Mount Golg, with Lord Vorthry out of the way. We all agreed that a new leader must be chosen. And so you held an election? Yes. Well, sort of. Not a single person volunteered to stand, you see. After a lifetime of leisure, we free citizens have grown somewhat indolent. Readapting to the harsh realities of life is trying enough, but to take charge of a broken city as well. No one wanted such responsibility. Nevertheless, Yulmore could not well do without a leader, and so we decided that anyone and everyone should be considered a candidate. And after we cast our ballots and tallied the votes, the mayorship fell upon my dear husband. Well, given the manner in which he orchestrated the construction of the giant Talos, none could deny his leadership qualities. But even before then, he had proven himself at Daedalus Stoneworks, don't forget. He is more than qualified for the role. The perfect choice. Indeed. I told him as much when his victory was first announced. But perhaps I was too forceful in my attempt to encourage him. For shortly after that, he vanished without a word. <laughs> you believe he was so daunted by the burden of leadership that he felt compelled to flee? Please, Lady Chai, dry your eyes. Your husband does not strike me as the sort of man who would abandon his duty, much less his beloved wife. There has... I truly think so. What about you? What do you think has become of my husband? Uh, I don't know, but whatever it is, he wouldn't have fled. Actually, let's see what it is. 
Nah, he probably fled. fled. Sorry, but I think he fled. Nay, my friend. The one thing he has not done is flee. Of that I am convinced. Through the most testing of times, he has ever remained at Lady Chai's side, placing her happiness before his own. He would not abandon her now. Yeah, okay. Wherever he may have gone, rest assured we will find him. Thank you, my dear boy. You have set my mind at ease. I will trust in my husband and await his return. Get out of this rain, Lady Chai. Jeez. Get that gill. All right, Alphano, you roped us into searching for a uh, missing mistral. Mistral. How do you expect me us to find it? Makes no sense for Master Shah to have left without a word, or even if he had, he would not have have done so unobserved. Someone here must have seen something. I'm sure of it. We'll split up and inquire as to whether anyone saw him leave, or failing that, if we have any idea where he might have gone, I will meet you at the Glory Gate to compare notes later on. Just realized, she looks awful lot like Rowena. Master Chai, why, why yes, I spoke with him recently, though I recall he was in a rather dour mood, concerned about your, your more's neglect of industry. Lord Valtteri's apparent inexhaustible stores of meal had no great need for money. It was little wonder our business was all but forgotten under his rule. But I assured Master Chai that the Boutique of Splendors The Boutique of Splendors will do all that I can to contribute to the revival of the trade in Yulmor, which seems to satisfy him. He took his leave soon after. An exchange with Moen has taught you about the stagnant state of business in Yulmor. There be one down here. Give him us jaw, are you is something amiss? When I last I saw him, he seemed ready to collapse from exhaustion. I insisted he ratch and catch his breath, and we talked for a while about his concerns over the city's defenses, amongst other things. He made more than a few valid points. Many many of our men are still recovering from our confrontation with Lord Valtteri. Finding General Ranjit in a heap in the middle of the plaza shook us all to the core. The bank commanded in no small amount of loyalty, and some of our longest serving soldiers seemed lost without him. Indeed, a number of them left. No, no, not that we blame you, of course. Without you and yours, we would still be blind to the error of our ways. Anyway, funding uh, permitted, I proposed replenishing our ranks with volunteers from the Derelicts in Gate Town. 
We have a duty to protect not only Yulmore, you see, but the surrounding regions of Colusia as well. And I, for one, would welcome any man or woman willing to take up arms for that cause. Indeed, I told him as much, and he seemed relieved to hear it. It was on that note that we parted ways. He had it outside, as I recall. In exchange, exchange with Corinne, or Bernini, that guy, Cornelius, was taught about the perilous state of Yulmer's defenses. Okay, so where in the relics do I need to go? Uh, over that side. Go to the southeastern relics and... Oh, Landlover, you were one of the ancient messengers, yes? How oh, fortunate I found you. I need your help. Ever since the abyss was lit with the city lanterns, a great beast the likes of which we had never seen had become heard hunting near the cups. It thrashes the gnash of the cavernous maw, leaving nothing but tattered flesh in its wake. The eldest of the Ath, Ath fear is an omen, a harbinger of a people's destruction. As we anger the ancient, we cannot know. We dare not enter the sacred abode without first receiving that blessing. That is why I came to this town of land dwellers to seek those who had helped us before, and there, here you are. Uh, please enter the ancient city once more, speak with them, and learn what we have done to earn their eye. Hostile creature, creature of unknown origin, threatens the lives of the Ando people. Perhaps the clerk of the Amara Bureau of Administrator can shed some light on the mystery of peace. This is one of the Love Lady uh, side quest dungeons. Oh, I recall man fitting that description. Uh, asked to speak with the poor buggers late, lately come from right. Said he wanted to know the state of things down in the relics, and we can be sure to give him an earful. Lack of food, medicine, clothing, plenty to tell. We hunt high and low for whatever we can scavenge, and it's barely enough to fill our bellies. The folk here don't want to, don't just want to survive, they want to thrive. When he heard that, he started mumbling to himself, some about finding us work, I think. Fair play to him, though. Not content with having his ear chewed, chewed about the derelicts, he asked about the other settlements as well. After that, I can't really say. It looked like he was headed for Gate Town when last saw him. The exchange with Hathambet has, has taught you about the poor living conditions of Calusia's downtrodden. Ah, there you are. How did you fare? Have you learned anything which might uh, offer a clue to Master Shai's whereabouts? Exposition! Or I took notes here. Interesting. He apparently paid a visit to the Queen Bee as well. They discussed the possibility of granting a mission to customers from outside Yulmore, an idea of which the proprietor was surprisingly receptive. Well, sounds like he's got big plans for the place. No more. I mean, not the bee. Perhaps, but the question remains, where did he go after leaving the city? As you know for certain, that Master Chai has shown great concern not only for Yulmo, but its surrounding settlements. It seems logical, then, that having consulted those within the city walls, he would wish to do the same with those without. As it goes, if you would go and make inquiries in right, I shall do likewise in the still tide. Gate town, I leave to you, Kashir. Fair enough. Uh, where shall we meet when we're finished? Well, top rung would seem to me to be the most, the next most likely destination. 
Let us reconvene there with any luck that one of us will have stumbled upon him by then. But if not, we'll have well suited situated to continue our search. Right. No, the name doesn't ring any bells, but there was a dapper looking missile missile gentleman here not long ago. He wanted to talk about relations between Wright and Yulmore, or rather the lack thereof. We lost a great number of people to their promises of meal and the uh, chance of lavish life among the free. When Vothry uh, thought to make even more, more from us, uh, conscripting the few able bodied men they would left to guard his paradise. I needn't tell you what happened when the signages came. Such things are hard to forgive. Vathri's gone now. I'm curious as to see what will become of Yulmore in his absence. That's what I told your friend Chai Nuz, was it? And I'm sure the other said the same. Not that he wanted to hear, I suppose, because he left soon after. That was it. That. So he paid a visit to both Wright and Gate Town as well, did he? I see. Kaishia and I gleaned much the same. He seemed determined to salvage what goodwill might yet remain among the settlements of Colusia, the only likely place he would left to go being Amnity. Come, if we are quick, we may yet catch up with him. There you are, Master Chai. No! Oh. That's a go south now, Kaishia. But what are you doing here? We might ask you the same, Master Chai. We've been looking all over for you. Looking for me? Whatever for? Lady Chai has been lying unconscionable in your absence. She claims you disappeared without so much a word and bade us return you to her side. What blazes are you talking about? I left a letter for her in our chambers. Though I suppose she could have overlooked it, and when she gets an idea into her head, we apologize. No harm done, Master Chai, but since we are here, might I ask what compelled you to come all this way? We were told you have been elected mayor, and from what we have gathered from the nearby villages, you've been inquiring about the people's grievances. Is it safe to assume you mean to take office? Now, now, let's not jump to a conclusion. I did le seek to learn about the problems faced by the people of Glutia, that I might be... Well, that much is true, but I mean, um, but no means. By no means, sir, uh, I'm the man to solve them. Tackling as many challenges will require resources. Had I've secured them, I would not be right to assume the role of mayor. See, I believe said you believe said resources can be found here. Indeed, the people's grievances are many, but in the course of my inquiries, I've already met with several individuals willing to lend their aid in addressing them. However, there remains one individual crucial to my a man whose counsel might yet make mayor of me. Respect, yet such foresight is, in itself, proof of your suitability. The city needs you, Master Chai, and I'm certain this, this man for whom you speak, whoever he may be, will reach the same conclusion. For what little is worth, we will vouch for you, you should he require convincing. Uh, 
Yeah, we believe you, Master Shy. I, I don't know what to say. You don't need to say anything. We've got your action, your actions to speak for you. For as long as I can remember, all I ever wanted was to make it to your mall. That dream's gone now. Burst like a bubble, or a boil, more like it. Anyway, outside of a pain master Alphano, I haven't had a clue what to do with myself. Spent most day, days in the days, but you, you've been running up and down trying to find a way to fix this mess for everyone. I reckon you can do it. You got that lot up. Got this lot up at Mount Gog. Gold, didn't you? No, how, how can Marion be? Going to you're going to steer your more to a better future. I know it. I want want to help. Properly help. Do something that makes a difference. I don't know what it is yet, but I'll work it out on the way. You let me come with you. That is. Uh, you give me entirely too much credit. A lot of you. I can't can't deny it gives me give me heart. Come then, let us press on together. Thank you, Master Choi. But we mustn't get ahead of ourselves. Your mom needs more than a man with good intentions, which is why I'm here to find one with the experience needed to see the city thrive. Who is this man exactly? And are you certain he is here in amity? Brendan is his name, and yes, he is, or was. Scarcely begun to explain myself when he decided it's time, his time was better spent elsewhere. He served as chief advisor to Valtry's father in office. If Ranjit was the mayor's right hand, one might say Rendon was to the left. Between them, they kept you more on the road to prosperity. The city needs more than a mere man of business, which is why I must find him. And even if you do, what makes you think he will listen? Before giving the chase, might it not be wise to speak with those who know him, here in enmity? He may be able to shed some light on his reason for rejecting your overtures out of hand. Yes, I suppose that makes sense. Perhaps we should start with Tristel, though. As I recall, I had uh, you had you made rather a favorable impression on him. I'm sure he would be willing to talk to us. Greetings, friend, and to you, Master Chai. I presume you are here to ask after Brendan and help over here in your earlier exchange. Well, with Vothry gone, your money wants for a leader. Should no one rise to the challenge, the city could very well collapse. I came here seeking Brendan's counsel in the hope that we would build a better, better Yulmore together. That is still my wish. Given how admirably you were mistreated there, I quite understand if you choose not to help. Worry not, Master Chai. I bear no grud grudge to you or the people of Yulmore, and I would not see you suffer from Vothry's villain. As you no doubt gathered from your meeting earlier, Brendan can be rather uncompromising. He has his principles, you see, a little patience for anyone who deems less committed to their own. Your desire to right the wrongs of your past, of Yulmore's past, it is quite admirable, and I fear the guilt you bear for the city's behalf works against you. I can see it in your eyes, and the way you carry yourself. It goes without saying he sees it as well. You must let those feelings go, Master Chai. Be more assertive. Commit to your course. Prove to him you are more as the resolve to change. Resolve to change. I believe he was heading towards Pit 8 when he left... If you plan to go and speak with him, I suggest you be firm and clear in your intentions. Very well. To pit eight, we m we shall go, and I will not take no for an answer. Hey, not even a maybe.
Well, well, it's you again. Well, I see you've invited your friends. Need them to fight your battles for you, do you? No, I, I, I didn't invite them, as it happens. Uh, though they are indeed my friends. Well, not only mine, but every true Yulmorans. They are the ones who awakened us to the truth, to Lord Forthree's villainy, the famous warriors of darkness. Are they now? Yes, they are. It would be no exaggeration to call them our saviors. We owe much and more to their kindness, but we cannot depend on that kindness forever. To do so would be a little different from entrusting our affairs to Lord Vorthry. Nay, we must learn to stand on our own two feet. And I would have them present to witness my attempt. Hear, hear, Master Chai. Your sentiments are admirable. Yet admirable sentiments do not a nation make. In my capacity as advisor, I once strove to build a better Yulmore. Gave honest counsel to my superiors, drafted laws for the benefit of one and all. But in time, my values fell out of favor. There was no need for them in this paradise Vorthree was creating. And so I left my homeland behind. But you, Chai News, you were content to wallow in indolence under Vorthri's auspices. And so I cannot help but ask myself what manner of nation you intend to build. I... Uh, I can offer no simple answer to that question. This much I will say. It is my hope that Yulmore can become a nation which her citizens might freely choose to build together. A great many people, myself included, flocked to Yulmore seeking sanctuary. The alternative being to live in fear and die in pain. It seemed an easy choice, and sanctuary we found as much food and drink as we could ever want, secured at the cost of the surrounding villages. Little wonder the people gathered at our doorstep, begging to work among the bonded. The free were blind to it all, of course, content to, as you say, wallow in indolence, in ignorance. Were I mayor, I would first take stock of the city's resources and see that they were assigned equitably. Our days of reckless consumption are behind us. The distinction between free and bonded died with Vorthri. The needs of rich and poor alike must be considered if our nation is to survive. To which end I would take steps to secure channels for supplies, rekindle relations with nearby settlements, who re-establish industry, reach out to neighboring nations, and the list goes on and on. But I am no ruler, nor even a politician. I am an entrepreneur. My expertise lie in planning and profit. I haven't the knowledge or experience to run a nation. Please, Rendon, will you not help me? Together, we could solve the city's problems. Build a Yulmore for the people. A Yulmore for the people. I'd rather like the sound of that.
But before I offer you my counsel, I would be certain of your ability to perform the duties of office. You would? You ask me to help you solve Yulmore's problems. But first, I would see you solve one on your own. Accomplish that, and you will prove both to me and the people that you are a man worth following. Right then, is there a particular issue you would have me resolve? You seem to have conducted an assessment of the problem that you face us. I assume you will agree, therefore, that the matter of dwindling food stores is most pressing. Oh well, yes, meal is neither a desirable nor less sustainable option. I assume alternative foodstuffs is now required to fill the void. And a man who hungers does not like to contribute much to society, save violence, perhaps. So tell me, how do you propose to solve this problem? Give me a satisfactory answer, and I will consider offering you my counsel. A combination of measures would seem to be in order. One to address the immediate issue of supply, and another that of production. Go on. For the present, your most coffers have been used to purchase food from our neighbors. It will afford us time to address the underlying problem that affects us all, the long-sustaining neglect of agriculture. The villages that once served as sources of trade for foodstuffs must be repopulated, and that means for production. That means of production restored. This assumes, of course, we can rekindle relations with our neighbors, guarantee security and stability in the region, and more importantly, find people willing to leave the city and take up the rebuilding effort. My, my. Think of that all by yourself, did you? Oh, yes. I began as a rather abstract plan I drafted some time ago after speaking with the people of Yulemore and the nearby settlements. You've impressed me, Chinas. Uh, I have? Well, that is a relief. Oh, you haven't secured my support just yet. Only my intention. Grand plans will not be enough to persuade the masses. You would ask them to rebuild, you must provide them the means to do so. Fair point, Brent. In one of which I have given much thought. I propose the use of tariffs to aid in the establishment and maintenance of these settlements. Their employment should drastically improve efficiency and ultimately increase production. Tell us. The Daedalus Stonework closed its door years ago. Without a ready supply of the necessary equipment, the people would starve before our plans would be put into effort. Well, as the heir of Daedalus Stoneworks, it just so happens that Talos are my, my field of expertise. And with a little help, I am quite certain we can require what we need in no time at all. Rendon is quite right. Building towers from scratch would require time and simply do not have, which is why I propose to, to make use of the long abandoned towers which wander the hill wilds of Calusia. They will need to be deactivated, of course, if the memory serves. The tools required to do so should still be on, at top rung. Come with me. Oh, well. Now look at all these, like, functioning defective talus. Ah, 
Ah, the old memory hasn't let me down. This chest contains canisters filled with dashingly potent insulating powder capable of halting the flow of ether in a talus. We need only get within throwing distance of one and let it fly. Thus and disable them without damaging them. Ingenious. No trick of the trade, nothing more. Once disabled, it will be a simple matter, enough matter to get them to march to your more, more extensive repairs can wait. Ordinarily, this is where I would ask you to run along and do the deed, but as I have said before, it's high time we learn to stand on our own two feet. Thankfully, throwing canisters is something even I should be able to manage. Come off it, Master Shai. Even if the tower is the threat, there's a hundred and one other things out there waiting to, to make a meal of you. That's it. That as it may be, Kaijia. But Renan tasked me with solving this problem, and I will not sit idly by while others risk everything to see my harebrained schemes realized. Not this time. Which isn't to say the mere thought of it doesn't fill me with dread. Told. And feel my legs. But if I'm to prove I'm a man worth following, I will lead. I must lead by example. Well said, Master Chai. Alright, but if it. There's any trouble we've got off. Yeah, yes, well, it should go without saying that I have no intention of dying from this. I've always preferred living to see the fruits of the labor. And to make sure I do, I require your help. It is as Kaishio says, these lands are dangerous if one is not careful. I would ask you to use my spyglass to look out for any beasts that could come in your way with my work. I would also need you to alert me when it's safe to subdue the Talos. Understood? Good. Then let us be off to the quick way. The north gate and see if we can find a suitable vantage point for you. Water. Keep a lookout for danger and alert and try news. News, but it is safe to incapacitate the Talos. May move this may move the spyglass as well as zoom in and out. Put the spyglass at China's and give him the signal to sneak sneak it in the Talos. So I'm clicking on China's. I, I did it! I did it! Let's move on to another town, shall we? Ah! Turn around right when I clicked! Ah, it's see me. Alright. Try it again. Perhaps it was a bit sad route for me. Aha! This time it didn't immediately turn back around. I 
I do believe I'm getting the hang of this. You may leave the next one to me, yes, ghost. Ah, that should do it. Now we have all we need to proceed. I can scarcely believe it. It was a reckless, foolish plan, but somehow it worked. I did it. Master Chai, I believe I owe you an apology. Your plan to replenish your most full store, food store shows forethought and sound judgment. What's more is plain your time at Daedalus Stoneworks has equipped you to lead as, as evidenced by the extraordinary company you keep. You, sir, are more than qualified to be the next mayor of Yulmor. I thank you for your vote of confidence. Fact remains, I am wholly ignorant of the world of politics. Why I would ask you to join me, grant you all the benefit of your counsel. I would be honored. When the people behold these talents, with no doubt that they will lead, they will lead, lend you their support. I would. It would seem your most leadership is in capable hands. Would you not agree? Would probably be be getting back soon, Master Chai. Have you tinkered with the talents and all that? Lady Chai's worried sick. I love this music. noise wicked white run away talos call the guard Oh, 
But of course I'm back. You didn't see. Nearest, I I can't. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry, my darling. It's just the sight of you filled me with such joy. I couldn't help myself. Oh, no, no, it, it's all right, dear. I, I should have just come out and said what it was I was intending instead of entrusting the task to a hastily scribbled letter. Does that mean you'll do it? Well, I'm here, aren't I? I mean, not, not, not that my absence signified any unwillingness, you understand? Oh, no, oh, naught could be further from the truth. I only left to enlist the aid of the former mayor's senior advisor. And now that I have it, I believe I am ready to take office. Again, Dear it, please. That was quite a reception, and one Master Chai will struggle for, to forget. More seriously, the arrival of the Talus has seen the public's attention. Once word is spread around Yulmore, it will be much more simpler to, much simpler to gather one and all so that Master Chai can make his inaugural address. No need to fret, Eskos. I have never felt better. <laughs> Uh, not of all, all overall, overawed, and not at all overawed by the prospect of addressing the assembled masses of you more. As to where to do it, you will accommodate everyone who would most feasibly wish to attend. Was the only place large enough would be the emergent. Then I will go and spread the word among the citizens, both free and bonded, that they are to assemble there to meet their new mayor. You there, Kaishia, was it? Did you go and inform the residents of Gate Town and the Derelicts? Uh, of course I will. Good lad. I will let the guards know not to bar the way to Vothra's chambers. It goes without saying that I expect the Warrior of Darkness to attend, assuming he's available. As well, see it through to the bitter end, eh? Only let the Crown Diff will show you up. I don't think spending the money to teleport into Yolmore is worth it, so I'm just going to go through Gate Town. Ah, yes. Mr. Ch Chai told you, us to expect you. The emotion is already filling up with people of all persuasions, free and bonded, citizens and non-citizens. But for you, our guest of honor, you are reserved a place in the front. Right this way, sir. Mm. 
There's Moen, the Rowena of the first. Thank you all for gathering here today. Uh, but before going any further, could I could I ask the free citizens of Yulmor to look around? It is a sight none of us would ever have seen under Lord Forthree's rule. Not only do we stand in the familiar presence of those we once called the Bonded, but today we welcome the peoples of the Derelicts and Gate Town too. Today we welcome the Warriors of Darkness, come to bear witness to Yulmor's new beginning. As you know, an election was recently held, at the end of which I had the honor of being chosen to succeed Lord Vothry. You place great faith in me, and I promise to do my utmost to live up to your expectations, and I will seek always to carry out the duties of this office with integrity and fairness. Always, I say, but not forever. Let it be known that I do not intend to hold this post indefinitely. I consider myself but an acting mayor who will serve only for the interim, while Yulmore is reshaped according to a new set of values. No longer can we think of ourselves as divided, as the free and the bonded, citizens and non-citizens. The systems put in place by Lord Vorthry must be undone. But even as we tear down the old, we must give thought to the new, to what manner of nation Yulmor should become. Whatever the answer may be, it cannot be decided by one man alone. And so I propose that an open forum be held, that we might all discuss how best to strive towards a better future. However, there can be no talk of the morrow unless we first address the issues of today. Securing new sources of food, rebuilding relations with our neighbors, re-establishing industry, there is much and more that needs to be done. Too much for a mere man of business. And so I pledge instead to do everything in my power to ensure our city's security and stability while we all work together to see these problems solved. The road before us will not be easy, and I know full well how daunting the prospect of honest labor may seem to some of you. But we must accept the reality of our circumstances. We must move forward. This much we owe to ourselves and to the brave heroes who risk their lives to bring back the night. Once we have shored up our city's foundations and regained some semblance of normality, 
Let us reconvene to speak of the future. Until then, I humbly ask that you lend me and each other your strength. For Yulmor! Good speech, good speech. Okay. Very much from the heart. Octavian. That was a fine speech, Master Shai. I believe your words stirred every soul in attendance. Uh, stirred them into action, I hope. If I've learned anything from all of this, it is that change begins with the individual. It is but a matter of finding the strength to take the first step. Assuming your fellow your moorings can, I shall be my honour and privilege to help them walk this road we have chosen. But we must not forget the individuals who have made all these changes possible. Were it within my power, I would carve a tribute of your heroism into the very stone upon which the city stands. I hate to change the subject, darling, but now that you have officially taken office, have you given any thought to your mayoral seat? We would not be moving into the emergent, dearest. Too big for one thing, and too far from the people for another. We will retain our current residence, and will govern here in the parlour. Oh, I was hoping you'd say that. I much prefer the view from the parlour. Beg your pardon, Master Chai, but uh, have you got time for a word? Ah, yes. Yes, of course. It, it hasn't met. Hi, that's me. I liked your speech, but there's folks outside these walls that don't... that haven't even had enough food to last till tomorrow, and more who will be counting their crumbs is implied plan to change that. I want to help set things in motion. Then we've much to discuss. No sooner have I take office than my work begins to earnest. Well, I suppose I brought it upon myself... Thank you again for your help, Asagos. I hope to see you again before long. Well, what a day. I don't know what it means exactly, but I do know that I've got plenty to think about. I sense we all have a great deal to consider. I had resolved to remain here until such time as Moore's future is secured, but it is clear to me now that the city is in capable hands. I have every confidence that they will find their way. I believe it is time we went on ours. So Alfred is leaving too, is he? It seems like everyone's moving on. Everything's changing. I've been thinking about what I should do with all this. Like I told you, I spent most of my time dreaming about living here with my friends in paradise. That paradise is gone, but everything's better given this taking its place. Better is taking its place. And I reckon I want to be part of it. This you're more for the people, Master Chai's been talking going on about. Ain't gonna build itself after all. 
Not that I'm much of a builder. Me and my friends will find a way to make a difference, though. Help, help keep things changing for the better. A far nobler dream than the one of which you clung before, and one I am happy to say we share. Whatever path you choose, I will pray for your success. Well, when, when you put it like that, there's no going back now, is there? We've got a few ideas on how, how we can do a bit. Just a matter of taking the first step. Vows of virtue, deeds of cruelty. Truly, to see Kaishia thus inspired by our actions is inspiring in and of itself. Yet however much I may wish to stay and see what c comes of its efforts here in Yulmore, I have matters of my own to attend to. Come, we should return to the Crystal Tower. Mayhap Becklug's studies have borne fruit in our absence. Welcome back. You're, you're given to understand a new mayor has taken office in Yulmore. Indeed, our good friend Master Chai has elected by popular vote, and after some considerable soul-searching, chose to accept the post. It's a shame you weren't able to attend the inaugural speech, though I have no doubt you would see more of him in the future. And tell me, how fared you in preparing the White War site? Our work did not proceed quite as expected. In, our, in your absence, there was a frank discussion of our principles of soul transference and con concluded at length that White Orosite was ill-suited for our purposes. But, Oriange, did you not say that, compared to the massy soul of an Asian, stone could house one of ours with ease? That I did, and armed as we are with Becklug's invaluable insight, it would indeed prove a trifling matter. Were we not to disregard the involuble link twixt mind and soul? A link which would, we did belatedly realize, be weakened more perilously in the process of rendering our souls dormant, as oresite doth require. Thus the shedding of these fleshy simulacra and the f surfeit of ether which comprises them would in all likelihood deprive us of our psyches as well. It would, theoretically, be possible to channel your minds into the Oversight instead, but we would more than likely sacrifice your souls in the process. Which is why we must abandon that plan, and indeed devote our time to finding a means of which, which mind and soul might be transported together. And we are no closer to solution than we first, first began. It is vexing conundrum indeed one of which the Crystal Exarch has posited a most intriguing solution. When our discussions turned to the transference of memories in the psyche, I could not help but be reminded of a technique in which I had personal experience. Eskos, do you recall what we learned uh, What we learned of my eyes from our encounter with Doga and Yunai? I speak at the Royal Eye of Alagon Imperial Line gifted to my forebears through the blood and memories of the ancient elegance. It is by this gift that I am able to control the Crystal Tower. If we were able to gain an understanding technology in which the elegance were able to accomplish this transference, perhaps that we could keep mind and soul together. Imagine, if you will, a device un like unto a soul crystal. Replete not only with our worldly memories, but also the bountiful energies of the soul. This is our current avenue of investigation, and we will follow it wherever it leads. While you are thus engaged, I think it's best that Eskos return to the source and for 
form cryo of the and the others of our findings. Agreed. I imagine Tataru would be relieved to hear that, that we made progress in this sort. Then I would beg thee leave to rela relay my findings with Thancred and Reen and do and to assist where I may if their investigations be empty. Yes, please do. Should we have have need of your counsel, we will not hesitate to summon you. Give our regards to Tataru, won't you? It's much cheaper to take the portal to the source because now it's only 70 gil uh, to teleport to Mordona instead of... Uh, Instead of 699. It's only 699 because I have a free company action for increasing the rates of teleportation. Eskos, you're back. How did everything go in the first? Wait, don't tell me. Cryo will be here shortly and she'll want to hear too. She's just tending to the others. Their bodies, I mean. Gods, I don't think I'll ever get used to saying that. Anyway, you can tell us everything the moment she gets here. Okay, normally I'd be like, okay, pause here, but this is literally the last quest of this patch, the 5.1 patch. I just want to get it over with so that I can cut and have this nice little cut. Wes. I don't remember if there's VO, but if not, here we go. Sorry to keep you waiting. Oh, there is. I've carried out the treatment as per Master Matoya's instructions. It should slow the destabilization of their corporeal ether quite significantly. But tell me, how fair are our friends in the first? Exposition. So this Becklug's the first to lead an authority on Soulcraft, are they? Sounds promising. And Urianger's proffered solution of white aurasite is rather ingenious now that I think of it. Well, while they press on with their preparations, you may rest assured we will continue to do our part here. Oh, you're back. And none the worse for wear, I see. Estinian! Oh, thank the gods! We've been worried sick. Did you lose your Link Pearl or something? The situation in Garlemald has become more complicated. I was making my escape from the capital when I ran into one of yours, Riol. He thought it best we come straight here. More complicated how? Where to begin? After entering the Empire via Razad Han, I went about my mission of investigating Black Rose. It was then, inside a provincial factory, that I encountered the one who styles himself Shadow Hunter, Gaius Baelsar. Our goals being apparently aligned, we joined forces and ventured on into the heart of the capital to the very Imperial Palace itself. 
There, we found a man whom all assumed dead. But his soul lives on, and he has rested back his flesh. Xenos Ye Galvas. Nor did the surprises end there, for no sooner had we arrived than he murdered his sire in cold blood. The Emperor is dead. This sent Gaius into a rage, and he charged in, blade drawn. And Echo. Oh, what's wrong? With both me and Kral. Kral has the Echo too. Seen him in action, his body at least. That's not. You will not best him alone. Nay, death will not come easily to that thing. You will join me, and by all means. For what good it will do. Black Wolf and the Aja Dragoon, I suppose this will suffice. Come, then. Simple pleasures on flesh. Truly, there is no place like home. Abomination. Whatever he is, Esgos is barely a match for him. We stay here much longer. Apovarus, your radiance, are you all right? We must. We may wear out our welcome. Your radiance! No! Ah. Must even the most middling of sport be spoiled? Or conspires to bore me. But I have no cause to remain. I'll leave these vermin to you. Xenos! Well, any bright ideas? Yes, one. Radiance. The intruders have taken flight. I repeat, the intruders have taken flight. Deploy all available magic tech armor. We cannot let them escape. I'm going to turn this down. Got a little more stuff to do. Such as roleplay. 
we got a Corthon Torment combo and Sky Dragon Dive. Thought about uh, leveling, uh, getting my lancer up uh, slash dragoon, but then I'm like, well, I'm already getting gonna get maiming gear from uh, So I think I'm going to be working on Ninja and, uh, yeah, Ninja. Wait, uh, Ninja and Dancer, that's right. No, oh, left and right. Damn it. This way, quickly. I like with these role plays, they keep it simple by putting the combos into one button. You know what they really could do? Is put the combos in one button for everybody. <laughs> That, that's right. It's full of dynamics. Someone's been busy. Oh, it looks very Ultima weapon ish. Oh, that doesn't. Auto prototype Arch Anima or Ultima. And you would bar my way, would you? So be it. Come, Nidhogg, lend me your strength. Let's see, I got. Alamorn, a Draken Lance, Horrid Roar, Star Diver, and uh, Limit Break. Let's see here. This delivers an attack with potency of 3000, absorbs a portion of damage dealt as. Okay, so it's kind of healing. Uh, delivers an attack with a potency of 500 with the DOT, with the dot. Uh, Horde Roar delivers an attack with a potency of 600 to all nearby enemies as well as enemies in proximity to those initially afflicted. Our Dyer delivers a jumping fire based attack t to target and all enemies nearby with a potency of 1500 for the first enemy and 30% less for all remaining. So, engage!
Let dogs show them your fury. Taste my lungs. Yes. Guardians in the Machina. Now, oh, where are you guys? Can we have VA again? Please VA VA interchangeably. Are you all right? into my past, did you? Exposition. Well, I didn't quite relive the experience as you did, but I bore witness to it all. I'm still not sure what I think of this gift of yours. But no matter. Our confrontation was cut short when the Imperial Guard arrived. It was then that Xenos took his leave, citing boredom. To think their research into the Echo could bear such fruit. Escaping death, jumping from one body to the next, and returning to his own after all this time. He is an Asian in all but name. It beggars belief, aye. But no more than hero traversing the rift between worlds. What? <laughs> My concerns are far more prosaic. With the Emperor dead and the Crown Prince missing, the Empire is in disarray. Until order is restored, assuming it even possible, we needn't fear an Imperial reprisal. And for reasons of his own, Xenos took it upon himself to rid the world of Black Rose. Riol has already gone to apprise the Alliance leaders of these developments. We may leave the matter in their hands for now. Then perhaps we have seen the last of the fighting at Gimlet. Though, if it comes to civil war, I cannot help but fear for the provinces. Ah, oh, I'd nearly forgotten to ask. What became of Gaius? Did he not escape with you? That he did. But we parted ways shortly after leaving Garlemald. He claimed another threat had arisen which demanded his attention. He didn't elaborate, but the absence of some device or other in the capital gave him reason to believe they're planning something. Lest you worry, I believe he has well and truly shed the Black Wolf's pelt. Conquest is no longer his objective. We may safely leave him to his own devices. Well, it's nice to have one less foe to worry about, even if we do have a mysterious new threat to look out for instead. Speaking of which, I'll see that Riel and Al Shinobi are made aware. Though we still know next to nothing, it can't hurt to be vigilant. Well then, with Black Rose nipped in the bud, I believe I've fulfilled my part of the bargain. That's true, but with the Archon still slumbering away, we were hoping you might agree to stay with us for a little bit longer. Sorry, but I'm not inclined to extend my contract. Gaius isn't the only one with business to attend to.
Thank you for your help then, Estinian. I see why Alphano admires you so. <laughs> Farewell, my friend. See that you don't make a habit of dozing off in battle. Little sheepish grin. I mean, he saved saved me that last time when, when it happened. I'm sure mm. that won't happen again. I suppose we should all be getting on then. As ever, we will see to the Archon's needs. In the meantime, why not get some rest? You've more than earned it. Go on. Must be shattered after all that hopping back and forth between worlds. Why not stay here and rest for a while? The backlog will manage without you. We've got enough science to help them, if you, if you ask me. Oh, another cutscene. Meanwhile, in Garlemald, we'll always do that. I really need a refund my beverage, but we're almost done. Traitors, you dare deny Lord Nerva, Nerva the throne! Ah! Onward, before this day is done, victory will be, shall be ours. I think I find it amusing, like dogs herding cattle in the slaughterhouse. That's you. The soul is... Who are you? Before your majesty, I am but another dog, lost, want for a new monster, a hunting dog if you should wish it so. For I know full well the prey you would seek next. Zodiac. Meanwhile, and you're more in the first. Did you hear? The mayor's reopened Daedalus stoneworks and looking for laborers. There's talk of reselling in some of the old abandoned villages, too. They're even laying. Laying on free talents to help everyone willing to make the move. Free talents? Aye. Aye. we best get packing. Any work, board and lodging? If it's not a recipe for hope, I don't know what is. Hope. Oh. Yes, as long as I yet live, 
I would see that feeble flame rekindled. It is my destiny to see our dream fulfilled. Point of order. I did that voice for a very certain reason because we know. We know. We know. Hard Bert has joined us. We, we, we're like, you know, the whole like, we're shards of the separate souls when we were split, you know? Well, we're one of the. We're, we're the same, but from he was from the first one, I was from here, so we were joined, so we're now more complete soul compared to like Nassian's original soul, etc. Less centered, I'd say. We're eight parts of 14. <laughs> All right. That's it for uh, the Vows of Virtue, Deeds of Cruelty uh, patch 5.1. I'm going to end this here. I'm going to eat some food. I'm going to probably come back later. If not, I will see you next time, whenever that will be. Yay! Do the post show.